Hello, good afternoon everybody. I'm sorry um, we didn't get to do the live stream on YouTube this morning. I had a few uh, issues and it wouldn't let, me, wouldn't let me log on. But we're here now, so I thought just by way of an apology, because I know some of you are waiting and I know it's not 11 o'clock in the morning, but I just thought I'd pop along now and I'm going to make a cushion cover, so we're going to do a bit of sewing as well. Um, I was out for the day, Laura, just got back. I was just determined to sort out this YouTube thing because I did feel a, a bit bad about that. So hi Tracy and hello darling, that's Zach. Um, anyone know what happened? Yeah, it's I've sorted now anyway, Rita, it wouldn't let me log on, but I'm on now. Um, so Cherry, hello, Diane and Mel, Sarah, Christine, Carla, hello. Anne-Marie, Ginny, Joan, Diane. Me Daisy, I'm good, thank you. Full of sushi. Um, oh, hi, Daryl. Yep, wasn't I wasn't going to, but I just thought let's give it a test and make sure it works and and come and talk to you anyway because I wasn't speaking to you this morning. Um, so, oh dear, a, a, a little bit windswept again today. Sorry about that. Hello, Sally. Oh, we'll get there eventually, Alice. I I can't. Um, I can't let it go when something doesn't work technically. I have to sort it out. So, sorted, sorted now. Hi, Sandra. Hi, Shirley. Um, morning, Monica. Where are you? For being the morning now. Hi, Em and Caroline. That's all right, Caroline. Uh, for those of you that weren't watching this morning, so I've not really kind of switched on yet. Hi, Linda and Geraldine and Cynthia and Yvonne. Um, I was showing you some rather gorgeous chambres that we've got on the website and I did threaten to show you a cushion cover that I'd made with them um, because it's not going to be it is I've, I've written this for a book that I'm writing with my friend Melissa and um, the book isn't even finished yet so it's not going to be I think about October time something like that um, so I can't give you the pattern for the book but I just wanted to show you how well these chambres work together I'm going to make a cushion cover with a jinky fabric in a minute. Um, so those are the fabrics and just using three of them. So I didn't use the yellow in this one. That's the cushion cover. Oh, did I? I did. I used it on the back. That is the cushion cover that I made. Now I use the, uh, the fat quarter pack that we have on the website um, with two different colored backs. That's why it's... Um, uh, they've got two different colour backs because they're fat quarters and um, yeah so I've, I used on the front those three colours and then on the back that was a different colour that's in the fat quarter pack and I've got the yellow in there as well but I can't give you the pattern because it's not going to be available until the book comes out but I just wanted to show you how well uh, chambray fabrics work together because I think with chambray's you tend to think of you know shirting and dressmaking fabrics but that I think works really well as a cushion cover so let me pop that down there got to remember where I keep these things uh, yes Kate we're working again on YouTube did I fix nope never did that Alana never did fix it hello Mary and Alexandria uh, I'm glad you like it how hard or soft did I stuff Maddie I, st I stuffed a hard stuff um, particularly around the neck because um, that's the area where it can kind of crease if it's not stuffed well because I had flops but the harder or the firmer you put the stuffing in there the smoother the um, uh, the seams are so I, I, I put a lot of stuffing in there I stuffed her I stuffed her really hard it is a quilting book Alice it's going to be called a block a week I think I can tell you we know we're nowhere near there yet um, and it, it is so it's a, if it's a block a week instead of a block of the month there are 52 blocks so I've been making some projects just to show you that you don't have to you don't have to make it's a huge quilt you don't have to make the complete quilt you can use the blocks to make other items as well and that was one of them um, but for now I just wanted to show you how beautiful these fabrics are when they work together thank you Linda hello Levan. thanks Christine Hello, Belinda in South Africa. What 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 time is it over there now? Thanks, Zach. Uh, Vic is in Tennessee and says good morning. Good morning to you too. Hi, Pamela. I'm glad you like it. Uh, first time I caught me. Oh, hello, Marie. 
Is this a good time for you then? I'm not normally live at this time on a Saturday. It's normally 11 o'clock in the morning. Um, Kathleen, I thought you were going to place an order. Did you place an order? Because we we're going to go halves on the postage. So I've been holding back and, until that was confirmed. I might have missed that if I have. I'm sorry. Um, but I, I thought that's that's what you're going to do. But otherwise, no, I, shall, I haven't sent them out yet, but I will do um, very soon. Uh, hello, uh, Feed Jane Aberdeen. Ellen to you too. Alana was doing grandma duty this morning. Lovely. You moving me around? This has been moved. Um, necessary herd. No, sorry, eight necessary heard back from anyone. Yes, Sylv. Because I couldn't get onto YouTube this morning, so I thought I'd do it now. You're right, Sylv. Yeah. Uh, hello, Irene in Cumbernauld, and Janet, and Donna, Lisa, Carolyn's in 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 Il <laughs> in Illinois. Il Il in Carolyn's in Illinois. Uh, and Estelle's in the Algarve in Portugal. Sorry for being late. No, I'm the late one. Should have been here at eleven o'clock this morning, but didn't quite work out. Um. Right. So I'm going to make a cushion cover with the jinky fabric so this is the new fabric on the website it is a rayon linen mix and i love the colors together i've got a rectangular cushion pad and i'm just going to have a play around with these pieces and make something that looks a bit like that because i just love the way that they work together so there's my cushion pad my cushion pad measures 19 inches by 12 inches so these i'm going to cut to half an inch bigger and i'm going to put an invisible zip down the side of it as well so the first thing i'm going to do with the jinky fabric because it's quite a loose weave and it will twist and move a little bit is to put some interfacing behind it and i'm using the g700 uh, so it, it is a, a woven interfacing, so it's not going to make it incredibly stable um, or it's not going to add oomph to it like something like a an H640 or one of the, the fleeces would do, but it will stop it from twisting a little bit. So I've, I've got that r the right way up. Yes, I have. So scratchy side, scr <laughs> can't talk, scratchy shiny side up and fabric face down. See, that's kind of twisting a little bit already. I've already cut these square, but because it's a loose weave, then um, it may have a tendency to twist. The peacock fabric, what peacock fabric? What is the, the purple and green peacock colors just behind my left elbow? Oh, this one. That is the April project for the Half Yard Club. Uh, it is a uh, foundation paper piecing, a really simple foundation paper piecing project, and it's a fully lined cushion. So you don't see any of the raw edges on the inside at all. So there's a couple of techniques that, that we're going to talk about here. So we've got the foundation piece patchwork front and the way that you line that as well. So mine is quite a small cushion, but you can add borders to it if you wanted to. So that's going to be released on the Half Yard Club website. On the 1st of April so way way ahead for you there um, oh Carol's bought a Juki DX7 congratulations you will love it it is extra Jean it's extra because I couldn't get onto YouTube this morning so I thought we'll have a go now it worked this time and I thought well while I'm there on YouTube I may as well be on Facebook as well so two in one day um, but I haven't got an awful lot prepped for this one because I have been for lunch with my son for his birthday today. And we had a very nice time. And just started washing Beatrix Potter when it's time to come home. Right. And then it's me or the son tomorrow. So two lots of birthdays. Pop that on there. So again, just putting the interface on the back to keep it a bit more stable. Might not need it on the back actually, but I am going to put it on the front 
Do I have fabrics at the sewing studio for sale? I don't know what the sewing studio is. A lest. Fabrics at the sewing studio. I don't know what the sewing studio is. Is that a manufacturer or a designer? Not sure. Uh, hi, Fee. Oh, she's been fabric shopping in French France. Don't, don't blame me what you bought. 8.40 a.m. in California. Morning to you then, Delia. Okay, so I could have done this before, but I, I've literally just walked through the door, <laughs> tested YouTube, fiddled around with a few settings. Carol's been prepping a birthday lunch for tomorrow. Mine was on the 7th. Oh, nice birthdays. Uh, hello, Anita in South Carolina in capital letters. She says, Heidi Ho. Okay, so all I'm doing is putting the interfacing on the wrong side of this. So I don't, I'm not going to put it on the back because we'll be here all night. And one more square there. So my cushion, as I said earlier, measures 18 inches by 12. This will need cutting down to size, but the squares I've cut to about six inches square. The small coral strip or deep pink strip, I've cut to three inches by six inches. I think that looks like six and a half actually. Um, this one is three inches by 12 inches and I need to measure the other piece, I can't remember. But it's going to be bigger than the finished size of the cushion so I can cut it down afterwards okay I think that will do I must replace this iron actually it doesn't steam at all now which is a bit frustrating all right let's cut these out uh, oh Donna's not looking forward to a birthday in a few weeks it's a big 50 I always look forward to a birthday Donna I hit the big 50 13 years ago when we had to we had a, what did we do I think we went to Portugal I haven't got a problem going older. I think we're the lucky ones. A lot of people don't, do they? And right, so just just cutting all the shapes out. Take your time; it's worth it. It's going to look really nice when this is done. I love the fabrics. I love the the linen look to the fabrics. <coughs> the natural look of them. And I just love the colours. So if I was in my studio, I'd be using rotary cutter ruler and mat, but these are a little bit big for the mat I've got down here. Uh, age is just a number, Eloni, you're right. You're as old as you feel. I still feel 25. I know I don't look 25, but I still feel 25. It is a shock sometimes when you look in the mirror and say, oh, there's my mother. Whoa. Um, hello Deborah in Victoria, BC, Canada is that? Welcome along. Is anybody's first time tonight? So I'm not normally here at this time of night, so I was kind of thinking um, that we might have some new viewers from across the pond because of the time difference. So that would be nice to hear from you if you are new. <laughs> Carol feels 32, but she's 77. Yeah, I, I, I feel 25 until my joints ache, then I feel 95. Okay, that will do. That could do the little bit more pressing just to go around the edges, but I think I don't want to spend all night watching me ironing, do you? Uh, it's worse when you look in the mirror. <laughs> Christian, I love that. Uh, so I look in the mirror and I see my mum, Christine, says it's worse when you look in the mirror and see your dad. Yeah, like when you when you need a shave, Christine. <laughs> when your whiskers are long and your eyebrows are curling and you know, your hair, nose hair is protruding. <laughs> Hi, Suzanne in Quebec. Uh, Brenda's still 18 in the head. <laughs> right. Just going to show uh, sew these together. I think these are going to look so nice. I really do. So I have that one. And that one with a little bit of, where's it gone? Where's that gone? Where did it go? 
I'm throwing it away, have I? I had a deep pink strip. I put the interfacing on it. Oh, there you go. Didn't cut it out. Not all ahead of myself there. Oof. <laughs> That's the one thing I, I have noticed since becoming of a certain age. I, honestly, my memory is getting shorter and shorter. Like, literally, did, did I did I cut that out? I don't remember. Do another one then. That will do. You go in the bin. So I'm doing a that, a that, and a that. And a that down there. And a that there. And then I'll cut it down to the right size when I've uh, put them all together. Mm, so here we go. So I'm going to do a quarter of an inch seam allowance. I'm going to have the creamy coloured on the top. Because I think that looks nice. Because that one really stands out. Because it's, it's quite pale compared to the others. There you go. And then that one right sides together with that. Like so. It's quite a quick one, but I think it's quite unusual because I've got the uh, the rectangular shape to this. All right, now I know that's. I'm going to put that around about in the middle, and I'm, I'm going to going to iron that actually. I'm just going to press the seams in the direction that they want to go in. go and then let's sew that one right sides together with that and we'll see how we look and I'm just using a quarter of an inch seam allowance Edge of your foot will be fine. There we go. Oh, thank you. Yeah, it's fine. It still hurts, actually, Zach. It still hurts, but the bruising's gone and everything. So, so that's good. All right, let's press that. Sorry, I missed that one, Fee. Missed that. I have to scroll back again in a bit. Uh, what did Lynette say? How interface everything on one piece first? Yeah, if I'm doing smaller pieces, it was just easier. Then you don't have to cut everything out twice, do you? Oh, I love the look of this. So that's that. And then this one's going to go on the end like so. Or is it going that way? Let me measure it. it needs to be 18 inches finished. Plenty of room. So these two right sides together and we'll sew down there and then we'll trim it down. I did have a nice lunch, thank you very much Pam. We got a, a Japanese takeaway last night and took it over to, to Tyler's. So we warmed up the bits that needed warming up and we sat and watched, uh, watched some, some Dog Whisperer, done a bit of Beatrix Potter ate sushi and came up. It was a really nice afternoon. I know alone. I know it was, it was, it was, it was quite a it was quite a whack. Uh. <laughs> Jean, really? You've got your potty hat on. Hello there, baby. Right, so let's give that a break. Doesn't it work well? And you know, interfacing it has actually helped. It's given it a little bit more depth there as well. Now, if you wanted to put some wadding or batting behind here and quilt it, then that would be a jolly nice idea. Uh, maybe do a bit of echo stitching. I'm not going to on this one. I don't think it needs it. I think that's looking really nice. Now I can cut it down to size. So it was 19 inches, wasn't it? Not 18 inches by... I think 12 and a half. I've already cut the back 
to the right size. Never thought about descaling, Tanya. I'll, I'd, how, do we, how do I do that then? 19 by 12. How do I do that? How do I descale my little line? Right. Let me see how we're going to cut this. Could have done with a bigger cutting mat, to be honest. So, eight, 19. Oh, only just. Let's trim the edge of that back then. Just make it nice and square. And 12 inches in this direction. That's better. So if I just trim this edge, oh no, I need to, I need to get that centrally, don't I? Let me let me mark the centre of that while well, I can measure that, and do six inches from each side then. So I need about half an inch there and about three eighths of an inch there. So I think I think that'll be all right. I'll measure it in a minute. Half an inch there. Yeah, and just a little bit off the top. Maybe that. Perfect. Right. I have an invisible zip I'm going to put in this one. So that's why I've cut the back to the same size as the front. And uh, white vinegar and water 50-50, then let it steam, empty and rinse through twice with clean water. Oh, oh I'll try that feet. Oh, then Alice has a mixture of lemon juice and water. Keep pressing the steam button until it all goes through. Never thought about that never thought about that white vinegar in the tank and steam through flush out before using it on you can buy these kettle liquid and pour it into your iron and say, never done that never done that before all right so i'm going to put the zip in the bottom and that was going to be the top with that in the left hand corner so with an invisible zip this goes in before you sew the seam so a little bit of a tip is to iron the coil of the zip open. We are in the hard water area, Ilona, it's really bad. We go through so many kettles. Um, so if you push the coil of the zip away, open it out and iron it, that's going to make it easier to sew because basically we're going to sew just behind those teeth well it's, it's not teeth it's a coil but we'll call them teeth down to the end there and the same on this side it is the colors isn't it Lynette? it's the colors that make it I, I love all of those colors together and i think this would work just as well with the uh chambray fabrics that we've got as well they're just you know you put them all together and they just work and I love the texture of this drinky fabric as well. Again, it's a, a rayon linen look. So it's perfect for dressmaking as well. Um, I was thinking palazzo trousers and nice summer weight jackets would be fabulous. All right, so I'm gonna try and position it kind of centrally. So the same distance from each side and seeing as I'm starting from the top, I'll put a mark there. And let's see if I can find my zipper foot. I don't know where all the, where's all my feet gone from there? <laughs> I haven't got any feet. How can I lose a zipper foot? Oh well, we'll just do it with a regular foot. So, oh, let's go here. So with the zip, if you line up the edges of the zip the way that it's going to fit, 
and then flip it over and that's where the top of my zip was going to be to make it central so I'm going to open out the zip coil as I sew and sew as close as I can to the teeth now the thing is with nylon zips like this you can sew through the teeth or through the coil it's not a big issue because you can always go back and unpick it sorry if my nose gets in the way but I want to get as close as I can along that fold so I, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing I'm undoing or unfolding the coil as I'm sewing just to make sure I'm sewing along that crease line just behind the coil so if you do catch it you can go back and unpick a few stitches because if you catch the coil you won't be able to open the zip obviously so I'll sew this side down and then we'll close the zip and just make sure that I've sewn in the right position if you have an invisible zipper foot that opens out the coil for you which I do have somewhere but I've no idea where I've put it now you can go as far as you can as close as you can to the zip slider you'll never get all the way to the end because the slider's in the way so let's just flip that back over and make sure that'll close so you shouldn't really see any of the teeth behind there okay so let's put the other side on so again I, I like to line these up let's make sure that's in the same place so the top of the zip is here so flip that over as if it was closing and then that will all go over there so that's right sides together I do have a video on putting invisible zips in on my YouTube channel if that doesn't make sense or if you can't see what I'm doing all right and then we'll do the same with this side so just line that up at the top I'm kind of stopping at the end of the coil so there was a little bit unsewn at the top here and like before let's just turn that open and sew just along that crease line it may if you're putting this into a dress or something that measures exact this may affect the seam allowance because this is a little bit wider than the quarter of an inch seam allowance I've been using but on a cushion cover like this I don't think it matters at all and so just keep unrolling that and sewing and sew as far as you can lining at the edge of the zip with the edge of your fabric and right down to the zip pull the thing is with that little bag fee I don't know which bag it is I've made so many of them right hi Brendan Kentucky now this may twist and it may look like you've got it completely wrong but when where have you gone there we go and just do it up you see you shouldn't see any of the zip so it shouldn't really matter what color zip you're using but the only bit you should see is that little teardrop shaped zip pull at the end right I've got one little bit shorter than the other but that's not a problem then at each end obviously you don't do this on a dress or something because you won't have um, the seam at uh, it'll be open at one end, end I should say but we're going to sew from the edge now down to that seam that I've just made I'll just move that zip pull out of the way a little bit so line up the edges and sew from here to where I started sewing the zip in the, oh the little blue one that tied at the top I don't think are feet for this machine I think those are just spare feet 
I'll have to have a look later. We're doing all right without it. Oh, I don't want that stitch. Right, so that... I'm moving the ends of the zip out of the way. That's why I left them loose. And so up to where I started sewing those stitches. So we've got that. And then the same on the other end. So I'm going to move that out of the way. Line up the two raw edges. And sew down there. I've got, I've got one side a little bit bigger than the other, but it doesn't matter. I'll trim that down in a minute. So holding this out of the way and just stop where you started there. So that's the opposite end. So you shouldn't really see where the zip ends and where the seam starts. That's the idea. Now let's give that a quick press and then we'll sew the rest of it. Rather pleased with that. The thing with this fabric as well, because it is a linen mix, it will um, it will crease, but that's part of the look of it. I like that about it. Because if you were making a cushion out of 100% linen, you'd have loads of creases in it. This doesn't tend to crease so much, and the creases do come out really well. Right, so, there's my zip look. Just see that little bit at the end and that will unzip as far as that and again you shouldn't really see where the zip ends and where the seam starts it doesn't really matter if you do it's you know it's underneath a, a cushion at the end of the day right i'm just going to trim that so that it's the same size And then we'll sew the rest of the cushion together. So make sure that the zip's open. Thank you, Alice. That kind of worked well, didn't it? And then we'll sew around the other three sides. Um, hello, Sue. Oh, thank you, Hannah J. I it's, it's the colours, isn't it? If this was, I don't know, red, white and blue, it would look completely different. But I think the reason it works so well is just because these colours work so well together. Kind of why we bought them. We, we did have, or Kim did have an ulterior motive, to be fair. She's, um, she does a lot of dressmaking. She's writing a dressmaking book. So I think she'd earmarked these to make some outfits with. They just went on the website, so we'll have to order some more. Okay, just lining up the edges. Hello, Chris in Georgia, in the USA. Welcome along. Right. Okay, final side. And then we'll turn it the right side out. And then we'll see if the cushion fits, if I've got it the right size. I did, Laura, I don't know where, I don't know where I put the little bag that I put my feet in. Who needs an invisible zipper foot, or even a zipper foot? That was just the standard foot on my sewing machine and it worked fine. Oh, hi, Kaz. Uh, yes, it was lovely, Jenny, thank you very much. I am full of sushi. Okay, so that's that finished. I think it might need another press when I've put the cushion in. This is going to be a nice plump one, I think. 
I like this shape of cushion as well, don't you? It's uh, a little, a little bit different to the square. And if you have a, a cushion display, that oh, that is nice and fat. Kind of like that. You just push that into the corners. Let me show you what I'm doing. Oh yes, and there. Now, if you if you feel as though that's overstuffed and this is probably up to its limit um, there's no harm in making a cut in here not with feathers but with um, hollow fiber and taking some of the stuffing out I'm not going to with this one and on the other extreme if you find that your corners your cushion pad doesn't go right into the corner you could um, take a little bit of toy filler and just push that into the corners like now let's do this up so you can see there's a the zip a little bit now it's stretched so much oh this would be so good in the small of your back <laughs> i love that don't you so pleased with this in you go so there you go so you can see a little bit of the zip because it's just stretched so much i'm actually really pleased with that i think that looks really nice now if you were to go into um what does it call them the high street stores the big ones you john lewis's and that kind of thing that does homewares or even somewhere like uh Denel for that matter and bought a cushion like that what would you pay this has taken maybe less, a, a lot less than half a metre of the deep pink and scraps of the other colours. So really affordable. I probably made that for a fiver. Oh, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's all the colours, isn't it? And it says perfect. Love it. Uh, smart out. What's Rachel said? Oh, I can't get on my sofa for cushions. <laughs> I love them. Minor stuff is fleece throws and blankets. I always got one to hand for a chilly moment. That's a good idea. Oh, I've heard of people stuffing them with soft toys and all kinds of things. Um, I know uh, Susie Duncan is a big fan of using scraps of fabric to make cushion pads with as well. So that's a nice idea too. <gasps> garden chairs fee. Wouldn't that be lovely on garden chairs? And the thing is, if you go for all four, you could make another one that has the cream fabric here and then maybe uh, the khaki and the olive. You know, you, you, could, you could make a whole set of cushions from the same amount of fabric by half a metre of each, but then just have all of the colours in, in different spaces. That's a nice idea. Oh, because the cushions we've got on our garden furniture isn't actually that, they're, like, they're a bit plasticky. You know, like the waterproof fabric. And yeah, so that's nice. Um, but would love that pillow. <laughs> Thanks, Zach. Oh, hello, Alessa. I'm glad you like the colours. Uh, Lisa loves the colours. I think I'm glad you like it. Oh, well, that was, that was quite a quick one, really, wasn't it? But I just thought, again, I'd, I'd come and apologise to youtubers particularly for not being here this morning youtube decided to just log me out and wouldn't let me back in again so a bit of an issue there so that's why i'm back again now but hopefully everything is resolved and we'll be back to normal on wednesday and on um saturday fee says i don't have fabric in my cushions in the camper honest oh that's a thought that's a great place to hide your stash if you've been buying stuff that you shouldn't. Oh, fee, honestly. Uh, Cheryl, thank you, Cheryl. Biz has just arrived home from errands. I thought you were having family time. I did, Biz. I did. We've been over to my son's and we've had sushi and we, we watched a movie and we had a really nice afternoon, but just got back. We are on YouTube, so we're live on YouTube now. Um, love the pouches on the back. Yes, if you have a look, Ilona, on my last... Facebook live from this morning I made up the blue sparkly one at the back but explained what I was doing with all of those I got a little bit carried away with those and there is a video on YouTube on how to make one of those as well from stretch Jersey good time for California says Delia thought it might be we seem to have a lot of you in the States and uh, and Canada here at the moment as well oh we might do it again then well, not every week can't do it twice a day every week Linda says great storage. So, yeah, great, great, great place to hide stuff that you're not supposed to have. 
Mm -hmm. um, right, so I should be back, <coughs> back again on YouTube and on Facebook, yes, on uh, Wednesday at four o'clock, then back again here next Saturday at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, a surprise for Mother's Day and seeing you twice today. Yeah, Mother's Day tomorrow, isn't it? So I've got two boys' birthdays and a Mother's Day as well. I thought, is that, that's, that's no problem, Ravina. I'm glad you've enjoyed it. So, right, I just need to do a bit of this over here. Isn't it nice? It's still daylight at ten past five. So looking forward to the lighter evenings, sitting outside, having a barbecue. I had to catch up from Grey Miserable in Spain. Oh, Jeanette. Mary actually messaged this morning saying that it was a little bit rainy and miserable. Um, oh, and Chris has just arrived in Spain where it's raining. Oh, no. It won't be for long. It won't be for long. I bet it's warm rain anyway, isn't it? But it's raw, warm rain. Uh, just as well, that turn cushion that you can just fold and make a cushion. That's a good idea. Anyway, I, sh I should go. I'm keeping you. So enjoy the rest of the weekend. Enjoy Mother's Day, if it's Mother's Day for you. I think Mother's Day is in May, isn't it, in uh, in America? I'm not sure about Canada. But it's ours tomorrow, so have a lovely day if that's what you're going to celebrate. And I shall see you again on Wednesday at 4 o'clock.